I believe that the upcoming M2 MacBook Air will simply be, overall, the best laptop that most people can buy. So, get our snacks ready and here's why. This right here is the M1 MacBook Air, a laptop that I can honestly recommend to anyone already. It's got better CPU performance than even a 16-inch MacBook Pro, yet it is super thin, it is also very light and portable, and it comes with an 18-hour battery life. But the next MacBook Air that we've already seen leaked is going to be an even bigger upgrade, making it an even easier choice for anyone looking to change their laptop. With the first big reason to upgrade being the brand new design. Back in 2008, we got the first-gen MacBook Air, with that iconic wet-shaped body. In 2010, we got a second-gen, with the same design language, but a more refined look and unibody construction. And then in 2018, we got the current third-gen, which introduced a black display bezel and the new space gray and gold finishes. And the one that we will be getting now would be the fourth-gen. A few months ago, John Prosser showed us the potential design for this upcoming MacBook Air, which was rendered based on images that he had seen. I already talked about this in our previous video. Now, John has been wrong with release dates in the past, but he was usually right in terms of actual product designs, like the AirPods Max, the AirTag, and to some extent even the iMac, although it ended up having that massive chin. Therefore, I think that there is a good chance that his design is mostly correct. The most obvious change is that this 4th gen MacBook Air seems to come in way more colors than just the three that the current gen model comes in. According to John, it would be sold in seven colors, matching the number of colors that we got with the brand new iMacs. And even the shades look quite similar to the iMac ones. We have blue, silver, purple, red, orange, yellow, and green. Yeah, pretty much the exact same ones as on the iMac. This has also been confirmed by leaker Dylan DKT on Twitter, and I think colors are great. It makes the product appeal to a larger audience, and having colors also makes the MacBook Air feel more fun to use. But it's not just the body color that's changing, the keyboard color is changing as well, from black to white. And same goes for the screen bezel. In order to match the look of the new iMac, I assume, um, aside from, of course, that massive chin. Initially, I was a bit unsure as to how I felt about this design, but now that I think about it, I don't believe that it looks that bad, like, at all. It reminds me a lot of the white MacBook uh, from the mid-2000s. Like, that was my favorite, or one of my favorite looking laptops, and I think that a design like that, even today, would look very, very classy. The brand new silver MacBook Air would look very close to that. But there is one more design change, which I believe to be quite controversial, which is the fact that the body of the MacBook Air doesn't have a wet shape anymore, and it is instead flat, <laughs> just like the MacBook Pros. And um, I don't know how I feel about this. The MacBook Air has always had that iconic wedge shape look, and taking that away would pretty much just make it a MacBook Pro, right? Well, more or less. I do believe that the Air name got tainted once the 12-inch MacBook got released, uh, which was actually thinner than the Air, but was not branded as an Air. In 2021, Air simply means more affordable, and I've said this before in the past, the fact that the same applies to the iPad Air, the same applies to the MacBook Air, um, which even though it is thinner than the MacBook Pro at its thinnest point, it is actually thicker than the MacBook Pro at its thickest point. So I think that if we go with the idea that the MacBook Air simply means more affordable now, well, I can definitely see Apple go for a design like this, with multiple colors, a white keyboard, a white bezel, and more importantly, the same shape as the MacBook Pro. And if they do go with this shape for the MacBook Air, it would mean that basically all Apple products, from the iPhone to the iPad to the Mac, the MacBooks and even the Apple Watch, they would all have this flat frame design, which I'm very fond of. And for those of you who are going to miss the thin, wet-shaped look of the Air, I do actually have some good news here. If we take a look at John's and Ian's render, the MacBook Air appears to be almost as thin as the entire width of a USB Type-C port. Yes, this is noticeably thinner than what we have now uh, on the current gen MacBook Air. Meaning that even though this new Air would not have a sloped design anymore, 
it would still be thinner than the new MacBook Pros and likely lighter as well. And, you know, it would still be worthy of that Air name in that case, just a better version of it. This new design is one of the reasons why I think that this MacBook Air would be the perfect laptop for almost all people. It will be a super thin laptop, incredibly light that you can take anywhere with you, um, and those multiple color options would make it an ideal choice for all age groups. Okay, now most of you watching this video probably have at least one Apple product. So if you're looking for some truly premium Apple accessories, check out Banvirk, our sponsor for this video. Banvirk originally started with high-end Apple Watch bands handmade entirely out of premium leather. They even had some collections where they used the interior leather of supercars to make their bands. Well, they still have those, but now they have iPhone cases and even AirTag accessories too. The iPhone case that we have here is Banvirk's Magakaj line, which is made out of Italian Napa leather by hand. Now, aside from the quality, what is really unique about this case is that it comes in multiple colors and you can customize it too by adding your initials or even a logo when you order it. Also handmade from the same Napa leather is Banvirk's new AirTag keyring accessory, which is the most premium AirTag keyring that I've ever seen. It even comes with these tools to install your AirTag in. Check out Banvirk's line of Apple accessories by using the link below. Of course, there's more to it than just the design. Um, so let's talk about the processor, the actual performance which I believe is the second reason why most people would very likely want to get a laptop like this. And if you want to get more videos like this, then definitely subscribe so that you'll be notified whenever a new video like this comes out. As you know, it's free. Okay, so the M1 MacBook Air is already faster than most Windows laptops. And the M2, which is what we'll get inside the new Air, is going to be even more insane. But before the M2, we would have the M1X, which is what the new MacBook Pros will feature. Now, these are set to launch in October or November, with the M2 now being rumored for early 2022 instead. So what is the difference? Well, we know that the M1X will be simply an M1 with just more CPU and GPU cores, as well as more RAM. The M2 will be a brand new architecture that will feature the same number of CPU cores as the M1, however, they are set to run at a higher clock speed while also consuming less power. On top of this, the GPU performance is set to be increased as well, thanks to more optimizations, and the core count is set to be bumped from 7 or 8 GPU cores to 9 and 10. So that's pretty great, it means that we'll get even more performance out of the brand new MacBook Air, which will be even thinner than the one that we have now. And here's the thing, the M1 MacBook Air is already perfect performance-wise, I would say. Like, it can do anything from 3D model rendering to, you know, writing and scripting and video editing, even higher than 4K. Uh, so it's totally capable of doing that. However, uh, if you plan on doing something a bit more intensive in terms of those applications, for example, uh, editing multi-cam clips, multiple 4K streams in the same timeline, in that case, it's going to lag. Uh, and this is something that the M2 MacBook Air could potentially fix. But I would say for most people, performance-wise, the M1 is already perfect, and the M2 will be even better. But of course, there is one last reason why I believe that the new MacBook Air will be the best computer for the majority of people. And that is the battery life. The current MacBook Air has up to an 18-hour battery life. Of course, that depends on how you use it. I haven't actually daily driven an M1 MacBook Air myself yet. I'm actually in the process of doing that right now, by the way. Um, but from what I've seen, most people get anywhere between 7 to 12 hours of actual usage, which I believe is really good for a laptop, especially since, like I said, this is actual usage rather than just some numbers stated by the manufacturer. The M2 chip, which is said to be more efficient, could improve this to maybe around 20 or so hours. I wouldn't really expect anything more than that, unless Apple seriously increases the battery capacity, which by looking at how thin the new Air is supposed to be, I really don't see it having a larger battery. So there you go, these are the reasons why I believe that the new MacBook Air will simply be the best laptop for almost every single person. Why am I saying almost every single person? Well, it's because some people might prefer 
you know, to have more ports or even more performance, which is where the new MacBook Pros will come in play. But for everyone else, the new MacBook Air will have a beautiful design and a super thin body, outstanding performance and a great true all day battery life. Unfortunately, it doesn't seem like we'll be getting that new MacBook Air this year, since like I mentioned, the M2 is now only set to be released in early 2022 as opposed to October or November. 2021. This has been reported by leaker Dylan DKT on Twitter, who I mentioned before, who has been surprisingly accurate in the past. He got the iMac correct three months before its unveil. Not only that, but he was the very first person to say that the 2021 iPad Pros will come with the M1 processor five months before its release. Whoever his sources are, Dylan has been extremely accurate in the past. So I would very much expect his 2022 statement for the MacBook Air to be correct. Um, he also said that the new MacBook Pros with uh, the M1X processor will be coming in either late October or early November 2021. Now remember how I said in one of our previous videos that I just did not see Apple unveiling the M1X and the M2 at the same event just because it would make the M1X look inferior because of its older architecture. But unless Apple holds that event that I mentioned in July or August, I just do not see them announce both the M1X and the next gen M2 at the exact same event, as the M1X would actually look inferior judging by its name and the fact that it will be based on the older M1 architecture. Well, it seems like this might indeed be the case with the M1X and the MacBook Pro event happening in October or November, and then the M2 uh, and the MacBook Air event happening in March. And even though I will very likely get the 14-inch MacBook Pro as my daily driver and you know laptop for probably a few years, I would still be very tempted to also get a MacBook Air. Like I won't use two computers, but I don't know, it's just the idea of having multiple colors and the super thin design and you know the brand new keyboard, I think that would be a really, really cool and fun device to use. But let me know in the comments, what do you guys think about this new MacBook Air? Do you agree that this will be the perfect laptop for most people? And if not, what do you think this laptop is missing? And would you actually get one? Let me know in the comments and definitely subscribe if you wanna see more interesting tech videos like this one hopefully was. I'm Daniel, this has been Zenof Tech and I'll see you guys in the next one. Zenof Tech, signing out, cheers.